Hi folks, this is Henry Vargas. Welcome to this training on the four biggest mistakes businesses make when they communicate that sabotage their success. So here we go. Point number one, the biggest mistake that, one of the biggest mistakes that businesses make when they communicate is having a lack, having the wrong foundation. Right, that wrong foundation consists of three things, having a lack, a lack of confidence, a lack of clarity, and a lack of congruency. Now what does that mean? So a lack of confidence, obviously, if you don't, believe in yourself and what you're saying or what you're selling, then that's going to come across in your conversation. You're not going to speak confidently. You're not going to speak boldly because there's, there's, you're not, you don't truly believe in what, in the value you're presenting, right? Uh, or the product you're presenting. So having that, that lack of confidence and lack of confidence normally comes from a few places. It could be insecurities about yourself and insecurities about your abilities and insecurities about your knowledge and the value you can actually provide. Right. So it's important because if you have this lack of confidence when you speak, whether you're aware of it or not, you, your clients reflect are a reflection of you. Right. So if you are, if you have a lack of confidence because you don't believe in yourself, then it's going to be nearly impossible to get your, your potential client to believe in you because you don't believe in yourself. Right. So it's it, that lack of confidence is the first evidence is the first part of this wrong foundation. The second part of this wrong foundation is having the lack of clarity. Again, if, if you can't in your mind paint the picture vivid enough, clearly that you know the exact, what you want to communicate and the desired result from such communication, then there's no way you're going to be able to paint the picture in the mind of your client or your potential client. Um, the, it's very important that you get clear because nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes clear, right? And the clearer something is, the more easier it is to be understood, right? Obviously, because that's why it's clarity. So the lack of clarity is the second part of component of the wrong foundation. The third part of having a wrong foundation is lack of congruency. Now, this is going. This might not be interesting to you, and you might not agree, and that's okay. Um, but words and communication and language at its core are spiritual in nature. There, it's because so having and communication really is an expression of you who you are at your core um being expressed through the words or or or, or the media that you the outlet that you choose right so having that congruence you have to know who you are as a person who your belief system is what your core values are and your core identity because if you don't you're not going to be able to be confident and, and you're not going to have clarity because you don't know really what's important to you you don't know what, that, what you value and so you can't communicate value to someone else because you can't understand their value because you don't even know what's valuable to you quite yet, right? So having that lack of congruency comes across and it's very important to understand that lack of congruency means you're not actually able to keep your word to yourself. And if your word isn't bond for yourself, how can your client expect that your word be bond for them? It, it, it can't. Uh, so having that lack of congruency is a, a big, big flaw. Um, so that's the, the first biggest mistake is having the wrong foundation. The second biggest mistake is having the wrong focus in their communication. Now, what does that mean? It means all of your words, all of your communications and everything that you engage in interact with people with are either self, uh, self-centered, self-serving or self-aggrandizing. Now, what does that mean? So if all of your words and all your communication are self-centered, then obviously it's about you, um, your benefits, what you want, how you want, what, what you plan on doing, right? And it's not focused on the listener and your potential client at all. So that's the having that wrong focus is being self-centered, thinking only of yourself, right? And the, the second part of this wrong focus is have is being self-serving, which means not only are you just focused on yourself, but the words you communicate with only express how the person's collaboration or response that you want is going to serve you, how you are going to be benefited as the salesperson and is with no, no concern at all to the benefit or progress of your potential client or lead. And then the third part of having the wrong focus is having a focus of self-aggrandizing, making yourself look better, making yourself look bigger, trying to make yourself, uh, you know, just putting yourself above your client. That's obviously not going to be favorable. It's going to have, you're not going to get sales 
if you're self-aggrandizing, right? So you, you want to make sure you have, you don't, don't have the wrong focus and the wrong focus. Again, the second biggest mistake is having the wrong focus, which is being, having communications that are self-centered, self-serving and self-aggrandizing in their content, right? Um, so that's the first two biggest mistakes. The third biggest mistakes most businesses make that to sabotage their success is having the wrong, creating the wrong feelings. Now this is very important. It's, it's the, this is while it is a piece apart on its own, it is actually kind of a byproduct of the first two mistakes. So what are the wrong feelings to create? Well, what happens is if you're not confident in your communications, if you don't have clarity, right, and if you're not congruent, and of all of your speech and communications focus on yourself, then that's gonna that's gonna create a feelings of controlling like you're trying to control what the person does instead of having them uh, or persuading them to see the benefit and taking an action of their own will um it could be generating feelings of so like i said the first one is feelings of controlling the second one is feelings of coercion like you're being like you're trying to force them into making the decision or force them really into set into agreeing or complying with what you desire for your benefit instead of focusing on their benefit. So that's going to cause a feelings of coercion and nobody likes to be controlled. Nobody likes to be coerced. Um, and the third part of this wrong feelings, creating the wrong feelings is even creating feelings of combativeness. Like there's, you'd be blown away how many salespeople, uh, what's traditionally maybe known as hard closers, um, aggressive closers, that uh, are combative in their presentations and then it's like and then they wonder how they don't really sell a lot right it's 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 confusing to me so creating the wrong feelings the third biggest mistake is creating feelings of controlling coercion and combativeness okay and those are the first three now this fourth biggest mistake that most businesses make when they communicate that can sabotage your success is having the wrong formula the, the wrong formula is the I, you formula, which states for every three times I use the word I in my communications, I use the word you once. Clearly, you can see that there's, there's an error in that because the focus becomes three times as much on you, the seller, as it is on the person you're trying to sell or your, your client, right? So that's backwards. That's not how it should be. And I'm going to give you the right formula in just a moment. But so... Just to clarify, this the wrong formula create it. It means you use I, me, or my because it don't have to always be the word I. It could be I, me, or my three times more than you use the word you in your communications. And what you do is you normally use the word I linked to a benefit or gain of some sort for you to your benefit to your gain, completely disregarding your client or potential or potential client, right? So. That's the wrong formula. You don't. You want to avoid these four biggest mis these four biggest mistakes, which are having the wrong foundation, having the wrong fo uh, focus, having creating the wrong feelings, and using the wrong formula in their communication. Right. So now let's talk about the four keys to communication mastery. Okay. So again, the first one is having the right foundation. The right foundation is coming from a point communicating from a point of confidence, from a point of boldness, from a point of security, from just being sure and confident, right? Being bold because human nature dictates, like I said earlier, that we trust people who are confident because confidence means that they are a person who can be confided in, right? And so if you are confident and bold in your communications, then just by proxy, people are going to attribute some level of trust to you, right? If you speak boldly. Uh, and that's the first part is having that confidence. The second part is having clarity, right? You want to be clear. Again, you want to be able to paint the picture with your words. If it's not clear, it needs to be so clear in your mind that you could paint that picture in the mind of a blind person, right? And they'd be able to see vividly every detail that you're describing. That's how well your, 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 um, that's how well your clarity should be right now. And I'm not talking about with a bunch of excessive words. In fact, it, except using too many words is backwards uh, to what you're wanting to accomplish. So using having clarity so that you can use the right words, because if you have a clear image, it's easier to describe with less words than it is if you have an unfocused image 
in which you have to use more words to try to get clarity. Now, also, not just that you want to get clear on what you want to communicate, but also, again, the result you want to have with that communication, because communication without intention is, you know, it's, it's a waste of attention. Communication without intention is a waste of attention. So make sure you remember that, okay? So that's the first part, having the right foundation, which again is having confidence, communicating from confidence, communicating with clarity, and communicating with congruency. So congruency, again, once you know and you've gotten clear on who you are, your core identity, your belief systems, your values, you can communicate from a point where it's, it's much more powerful because now it's not just the words, right? It's, it's you're, you're expressing who you are in your entirety. Now this might, I'm not, might seem a bit too much for just regular con everyday conversations, but the reality is that this applies to everyday conversations, but specifically more when it's in a sales context. Because you want to be congruent with who you are because that comes across in your communications. If you are not congruent, people are going to see that and they're going to say that's going to create doubt. But if you are congruent, it's going to come across that you are genuine, that you are, you know, that, that, that you're sincere, that you're honest. And these are obviously favorable uh, character traits that lead to creating trust, which we're going to talk about the correct feelings in a minute. So the first key to master to communication mastery is having the right foundation, coming from a point of confidence, and that confidence means confidence in yourself, confidence in your knowledge, and your ability to deliver on what you are saying you're going to deliver, right? So having that confidence, having that clarity, and having congruency with who you are in all of your communications, okay? Very important key. Second key is having the right focus, right? So the right focus with your communications is being 100% Client, client focused or uh, or lead focused or audience focused really is the easiest way that I, I could say that right. Which means you want to be you want to focus all your communications centered around your audience. So you're always speaking from a point of them, no more than a point of from you, right? So you want to focus your wording towards them or to focus on them. The second thing is you want to be. Um, audience serving so you want all of your words you want actually it's very interesting recently you know it's, grace is a gift right so you want your words to be a gift for people with people right so your words ought to serve people when you communicate with them and that means that means showing them well one giving them that, that your words are applicable right they're practical and they are absolutely useful for what they are trying to do because that's going to help serve them and it's going to like like Frank Frank says actually help show people you can help them by actually helping them right in all of your communications. Um, so that's being audience centered, audience serving, and audience aggrandizing, or as I like to say it easier, build up your audience right. You should your words should build up the person listening to you right. It should instill in them, which we're going to talk about in a second, the right feelings. It's gonna inst it should instill in them. Um, it should make them feel good. It should bring them up. It should give them the confidence in themselves that they can do what need what they need to do to achieve the result they want. So second, the second uh, key to communication mastery is creating the right feel. I'm sorry, having the right focus. Now the third key is having the right feelings, and um, these feelings are pretty much. Like a byproduct uh, of the first of doing the first two map keys, um, but you, it's also good to focus on these intentionally and not just let it be a result of the previous two keys. And so the third key to math to communication mastery is having the is creating the right feelings, right in your listener, in your audience, in your potential client, or in your client. Which means, which what feelings are those? You want to create feelings of connection, confidence, and collaboration. Right? You want. You want to create connection because we we only buy from people we like, know, and trust, right? So the, the your words ought to be able to generate that connection uh, with your listener, right? And, and and help them say, man, this person understands me. This person can relate to me. This this individual hears me because as a as a human, it's one of our greatest needs to, to feel like we are heard. And there's a there's a whole training that could be done on how to effectively make people feel heard in, in a very short manner of time. But for the sake of this video, we're not going to get into that. It's just very important that uh, you, you understand that you create those feelings of connection, right? And then uh, confidence, as, we were, as I said earlier, confidence, the word confidence means to, to confide in. And 
if you so you, you since the foundation of your communication is confidence the what's going to happen is that feeling is going to translate to your listener or your potential client or your lead or your lead or your client and they're gonna see a couple things gonna happen. They're gonna feel more confident in their ability to, to do what's necessary to achieve the result. And it's gonna attribute trust to you because you're building the confidence in them. So now they have confidence in you. And again, confidence is just another word for trust, right? And so now they have trust in themselves more and they trust that some of that trust, new trust is attributed to you because you were the one that helped them gain that confidence that trust in themselves, and so now they trust you more. Um, so confidence is the second uh, element of the right feeling, and then the third one is you wanna generate feelings of collaboration, right? Because we, as humans, we, we're, we're social beings, we like to work together. Now, obviously, there's some personalities who prefer working alone, and, and that's fine, but in general, we like to collaborate with each other. It, it's fulfilling because we're, as humans, we, we it's a need to have relationship, right, uh, with people. And so having um, having that right feelings of, creating those feelings of collaboration means that obviously you've helped them get closer to where they want to go. Now they're gonna collaborate with you on acting in the way according to what your communication was, the desired, the desired result of your communication was, i.e. A, a purchase, i.e. Uh, an opt-in, um, um, you know, whatever the react, whatever the response that you wanted to occur because of your communication will occur when you create the feelings of collaboration, right? So it's very important to understand those three. Com com communication mastery key number three is generating, creating the right feelings. And so communication mastery key number four is having the right formula. And the right formula is very simple. It's the, I call it, it's the UI ratio, which states that for every time I'm gonna use the word I in a conversation, I use the word you three times. Um, and as you can see, just there's a lot there to digest. Um, this is, it's really powerful because I've seen how in call centers um, and, and different sales settings, um, how quickly this can change a person's demeanor. Like I was working recently with a, a call center and, um, it's an old, you know, they're working through cold leads, old leads and whatnot. And so a lot of times, uh, sometimes people pick up and they're very hostile, they're very aggressive in their communications, right? Um, but I've seen how, even just in, intro, in the intro of the call, which consider, right, being cold calling, let's say for example, um, the, the, I'll give you an example. So um, let's say you're, you're cold calling in, in a call center, right? So you have to, normally what you do is you, you, you're on a dialer, right, waiting for the call, uh, waiting for the call to pick up and when they pick up you say hi this is blah blah this is Henry from blah 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 and then whatever your sales pitch is right um, this is this this is that often creates either hang-ups um, very angry people aggressive people because they get so many of the same calls right so what happened is I I've, I've, I've decided to apply what I'm telling you now what I'm teaching you now the UI formula uh, to this setting and so what happens is people who would pick up aggressively and with a bad attitude and like look into like almost in a combative, combative tone, their demeanor would change instantly as soon as I applied this. And even by the end of the intro, which for example, let's say this, okay. So most people in a call center would say, hi, this is, X, this is Henry from XYZ company is what's his name available. Um, that's okay. Uh, but there's more focus on you and what you're looking to do than on the person, right? So what I did is I changed that, changed even just the beginning to say, hi, this is Henry, is X available? Yes, this is X. Hi, X, this is Henry from XYZ Company. How are you doing today? Uh, they'll say, oh, I'm good or I'm not. Or they'll say, what's this about? You know, they don't understand what's going on in their mind. But then after they say, oh, after I say, I say, how are you doing? They say, oh, I'm good. What is this about? Um, I say, great. The reason we called you today, name, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so just in those first 20, in those first few seconds, the people shift from having such an aggressive mindset and energy that you can feel over the phone to instantly becoming more docile, more receptive. Why? Because you've centered the call around them. 
you've already said their name three times and you've only said your name twice and you've mentioned the company just once right so that's just a small example of how powerful this having the right formula is which is the fourth key to communication mastery having the right formula which is the ui formula which again states every for every time i'm going to use the word i in a conversation or communication i have to use the word you three times now the second element to this is that it doesn't really have to always be the person's the word you it can you can change between the word you and the person's name because Human nature dictates that everybody's favorite word is their name. Their favorite, favorite, most favorite word is their name. And their second favorite thing to hear is their name attached to an added benefit or gain, which is the other parts of this formula, right? The third part is you want to use their name, right? And use the word you and focus on them with either a benefit or a gain of some sort. Um, but you, you just, you don't want to Keep, you, want, you want to keep the focus on them, right? So in the example that I gave, you know, even if people didn't respond to say, how are you, to the, how are you doing today? Subconsciously, it makes a note that, okay, this person was considering me before asking for something, right? Um, and so that's just an example of how to properly use the UI formula. So guys, I hope this has been helpful. Those are the four keys to communication mastery. Again, you wanna have the right foundation, which the foundation is a foundation of confidence, clarity, and congruency. You wanna have the right focus, which is focusing on your audience. It has to be, your words should be uh, audience-centered, audience-serving, and audience-aggrandizing. And so the third key to communication mastery is having creating the right feelings, which are feelings of con connection, confidence, in collaboration and the fourth key to communication mastery is the right formula using and applying the ui ratio in all of your communications will transform your sales effectiveness hope this was helpful see you guys next time